Wang Wun, who is being recognized as one of the last artists. Naihan po tayo ay pwedeng maging isang bayani sa ating sariling paraan. Beautiful ako sa kung ano ako, oh, sa kung oh. ano yung meron ako. We were able to give about a thousand bicycles to ten cities in Metro Manila. The Iron Lady of Asia, ganito nakilala si Senator Miriam Defensor Santiago noong nabubuhay pa siya. The winner of Asia's next top model is Maureen! Which is Heroes. This is our podcast that features strong women and engages in conversations to empower you. Join me as we hear from Shiro's all over the world, share their journey in becoming the woman they are today. We hope their stories can help inspire you find your inner Shiro. This is Pauline Lopez and welcome to Shiro Talk. Today on Shiro Talk, we'll get to know more up close and personal an exemplary woman who made the Philippines proud when she became the first Filipina to win Asia's Next Top Model. Congratulations, honey! You are Asia's Next Top Model! Oh my gosh! I cannot. Winning this means so much. Years after, she became one of the most influential youth icon because of her passion to help other people. Her recent entrance in the Miss Universe 2021 pageant was a decision she made in order to help her advocacies. Let us welcome Maureen Robowitz. Hi Maureen, thank Hi. you so much for being here on Shiro Talk. How are you? I'm doing great, how are you? I'm it's been a while. <laughs> I know, it's been a while since we saw each other years ago. That was was that 2016 or 2017? No, was way, way, everything? way, way before, before everything. We were like 14, 15 I years old. I think that was 26. Oh, way God. before, oh 2014. Gosh, way before, I think. Well, let's get right to it. So flashback to 2017. What gave you the courage to join Asia's Next Top Model? I did not have the courage, to be honest. It was super spontaneous. I had... I was thinking of doing a different project at the time, but then my manager, Chini, she really convinced me to go to the audition for Asia's Next Top Model. And I think one of the things that really helped me, I guess, shine and show my personality was going in and saying, I don't want this anyways. Like, I don't care. No expectations. Yeah, no expectations. Yes. And so that really helped me. And I was surprised when they actually liked me. I was like, really, you like me? Do you like it? Yes, you do. That's <laughs> awesome. Okay. Sorry. Instantly, I am taken by your facial expression. That right there screams passion and domination. I'm taken by it. Job well done. I was really surprised, but then when it was nearing the, because, the, you know, when I was actually accepted as one of their models, I guess, from the Philippines, the rep yes. representing the Philippines, I I think I was going a little bit insane. <laughs> I was freaking out, and I remember talking to my dad. I said, I don't want to do this. But I, I, what if I do this next year? I don't think I'm ready yet, but my manager said, no, this, this year's your time. You need to join. And my dad said, you've got nothing to lose because, I mean, I just moved to the Philippines just a month before that. But I was freaking out. I so mean, we're I all know. so glad that you did. Like, that's so amazing. We all watched you, supported you. You have what it takes to be an amazing, amazing model. I never cared that you were the pretty one, as we labeled you. I never cared you were the youngest one or you were the shortest one. Because truthfully, in modeling today, none of those labels matters to me. Somehow, I knew you would be here. And you deserve to be here. You've really come a long way, and I'm really proud of you. And so you've won Asia's Next Top Model already. What drove you to join Miss Universe? Well, as 
Asia's Next Top Model, or, or as a model, you are this canvas and you're not really supposed to speak and, I mean, raise your voice, speak up about certain issues because as a model, you kind of get the, like, people have the impression that you're not very smart, mm -hmm. I guess. Boxing it, yes. Right? Mm -hmm. And they just expect you to model. And whenever a model speaks up, it's like, don't listen to her. She's just the model. But the difference with that is, as a beauty queen, it is, it's totally different. Marine Krista Robelwitz, 23, Pangasinan! And people actually expect you to talk about social issues, expect you to talk about certain things and the things that you believe in and you have a voice and that is what I was looking for. I mean, I can do that as an actress as well, mm -hmm. but there's this different thing as a beauty queen to have this platform and there's so many Filipinos who watch pageants yes. and so that is... The impact you have on people is incredible. I'm Marine Krista Robelwitz, but you can call me Mao, Mao Mao, or even Maui. I'm a model, host, actress, and now an aspiring beauty queen. Well, I totally agree with you, and now more than ever, the dialogue of women and empowering women has had a bigger role in society. So how do you see yourself making an impact if you win Miss Universe? So one thing that me and my manager are always going for is kind of breaking the stereotypes mm -hmm. and the barriers and I know that maybe I look like I fit the mold as a beauty queen but my personality, the way that I am, is totally not beauty queen-like, mm -hmm. I guess. I describe myself as weird, clumsy, and awkward so you can imagine, I think. I hope. <laughs> and so I just want to go into this journey being myself and sh showing people that it is fine to have flaws. It's, if it's fine to be imperfect and you need, don't need to always strive for perfection. And so I hope that more people get to see me and get to embrace themselves because I am embracing who I am. There are so many insecurities that I had and I, I even had an impact um, on some people because me, I mean, I don't know if I can talk about it, but I mean, I don't have a oh. breath, you know? And um, I was, and I get a lot of hate for that. People say, oh, flat, you're so flat. I mean, I'm like, and I'm proud. And a lot of girls actually thank me for that because I mean, there was a time where I was so insecure that I said, maybe I'll, I'll get um, surgery. I want to change you're this about myself. definitely making those barriers. Yeah, and, and so it's just, I'm, I just want to go into this embracing who I am with all my flaws and I hope that through me, other women, boys, mm -hmm. um, men, women get to do that as well. You're definitely breaking barriers and setting great examples for young girls who look up to you. So now we're going to be talking about women and women who inspired you. So name a woman that most inspired you growing up and why? My mom. <laughs> Well, my mom, she was going through a lot and she had four girls and imagine four girls in just a Full year open. between. Yeah, and we were we were so small and we were always fighting. And so she was really busy with us. And at the same time, she was battling cancer. So she had cancer for eight years and she did not once let us know that she was in pain, that she was suffering, and she's the strongest person that I know. And this is also one of the reasons why I'm doing what I'm doing, is really to make her proud. And I know that she's watching over me. I know she's watching over us. And so she's always been my inspiration. I think if she saw you today, she'll be so proud of you. And now, now that you're talking about strong women, what is one thing you know about women now that you wish you had known earlier in your career? That we're allowed to say no. <laughs> most definitely, right? most we're definitely. We're allowed to say no, mm -hmm. we have a say, we are allowed to speak up. And there were times in my life where I didn't, and I wish that I did. And so to all the women out there, you have to speak up and raise your voices, yes. let yes. them be heard. <laughs> yes, that's definitely important now. And because women are always supporting each other, why is it so important to declaring now is our time? Well, one thing that I actually noticed um, of being, I guess, with my sisters, but mm -hmm. also you know, our friends, is that, and especially on social media, that actually the that women love to hate on other women. 
And that is, it's it's horrible. And the reason for that is our own insecurities. Yes. If we look into ourselves and see why am I jealous of this? Why am I thinking this way? It's because of our own insecurities. And so we need to strive to become empowered women because empowered women are women who are so confident and practice self-love so that they don't need to hate on other people to make themselves feel better. And we need to, to practice that Self-love is so important. I've learned that and ever since I've practiced self-love, so many things have changed in a positive way. And we can have this impact if we all just support each other. And we need to understand that, that we can do so much better and we can achieve so many things if we support each other and empower each other. So awareness and knowledge yes. of, that, of that statement that you just said. So now we're gonna do a little bit of a flashback. So if you saw your 10-year-old self today, what advice would you give little Maureen? Well, 10-year-old me was oblivious <laughs> of all the things that was gonna happen. <laughs> and to be honest, a lot of negative things were happening at the time after I turned 11. So my mom passed away when I was 11. So if I could talk to my 10-year-old self, I would say that you're about to experience the worst. <laughs> but you are so strong and you will remain kind despite all the things that is happening to you and you should know that it will not be forever mm -hmm. and that you can get through this. I mean, I think we need to talk about this en enough. Um, the resiliency of women needs, to, be, needs sh uh, to shed light on with every issue that's happening today. So, the next question would be, when you're having a hard day, you don't want to get out of bed, you just don't want to commit to any of the projects that you have, for example, what motivates you to keep going? Well, one thing about me is I'm a perfectionist. Oh. So, perfectionists are <laughs> <I hate laughs> procrastinating. It's because mm -hmm. we want to strive for perfection even though I'm already saying I don't want imperfect things. So I'm really changing that about me. So I have a lot of those days where I don't feel motivated and I think they're okay. I think you need to to take that rest and take the you know it's a moment to think mm -hmm. but one thing that motivates me again is my family and my dreams as in those are the perfect motivation after one dream I always have another dream and I always want to try for that. greatness yes, yes. I, I, I mean we're where we only live once and we need to also understand that we every day we learn something new and we should never stop learning. I'm so glad that you mentioned that. You know, we live in this world, like you said earlier, when people try to mold mold who we are as a woman and I feel like that definitely goes against the essence of being a woman, especially here in the Philippines. So we'll, now we're gonna get into the more fun questions, not so hard. Okay. <laughs> if you had to pick one, beauty or brains, and why? Of course, brains. Of course. Well, brains is going to get you far in so many different um, areas in life, whereas with beauty, it fades. And I mean, the outer beauty is not as important as the inner beauty. Yes. That's mm -hmm. what gets you far. And I love that successful. answer. <laughs> and next, if you had to pick one, and we don't have to dive super deep into it, but career or love? I'd say love. I mean, not just love from a partner, but love from your family. I don't. I mean, you, you don't. Yeah, because love from friends, love from family. I mean, you can't live with that. That's such a sad life if you just choose your career. And I know that the people that did choose their career, and I, nothing against that, but I have talked to so many people who have chosen their career and they regret it later in life because they're like, what was all this for mm -hmm. when I didn't have the love and. Life is so much better with love. No, I totally agree with you. I feel like we all have to find that balance. Yeah, it's you all know, about certain balance. phases of life. And so now for the final question, as an extraordinary shiro as you are, what message can you share to inspire women all over the world? You may share it through the screen so they can feel your answer. So with you. Hello everyone to everyone watching right now. I just want to say that that you are all strong, you're all wonderful, and you are all beautiful in your own ways. And I hope that we all learn to embrace our flaws and not always strive to be perfect because there is no such thing as perfection. And let no one define who you are. So let us not define ourselves by the trends that we see online. And let us really embrace who we are as a person.
Thank you so much, Maureen, for that Thank incredible you. message. I had so much fun with you today after how many years of seeing each other. And I hope we get to catch up soon once again. So to all my fellow Shiro's out there, let's make a difference and reshape the world together. Follow me in our future episodes and discover our power from within. Our time is now. This is Pauline Lopez and see you soon on Shiro Talk.